24 hours a day, it makes me think it's a bit of a long shot. Oh, and it takes seven years to get there. But I thought about that a lot, and I thought it's interesting, isn't it, that one of the things that's gripped our interest from the days of kind of sci-fi movies first started to be made in the 1920s to today is this kind of idea that somewhere, somewhere, there is a different kind of life. And it may well be that that different kind of life is indulged in by people who are not like us. But somewhere deep inside, it seems that we have a kind of anthropological kind of need to believe that there is a different kind of life uh, around us. I've always been very struck um, as a bishop to remind myself that actually Jesus didn't bang on about the church that much. Um, in fact, as far as the New Testament is concerned, the word ecclesia, the word for church, was only used twice during that period. And um, most scholars think those were kind of later insertions into the text. What Jesus came to form, I think, was a new kind of community based around the idea of discipleship, of learning together and praying together and being together. Some of you may have picked up Rowan Williams' is very good little book on uh, discipleship where he says the essence of discipleship is staying together. What I think is truly worthy about the Lee Abbey vision for community is it seems to me that it picks up on something very deep within us. I believe that we were created by God to be social animals. I believe that we were created by God that we would learn better in community and pray better in community. And when in our world people see community lived out, I've always imagined it would have an impact that, frankly, a lot of churches might never have. Um, I was with Rob Scott Cook this morning from Woodlands Church. He told me that they have 140 people now uh, living in the city of Bristol who live in community together. Um, I was just talking with Alistair here, saying that I thought in the 1990s that community life would really kind of be turbocharged, and, and of course I was wrong. It hasn't happened yet. But it may be happening as church going seems to be on the retreat. It may well be that the future of Christianity in this country will be more around people who are not formally grouped into churches, but people who decide to be together with Jesus in prayer and around a rule of life. Somebody said recently the two drivers of modern history were individualism and freedom. And I find it very interesting that one of the hallmarks of community, I should say by the way, I did live in community. Um, I don't know whether mentioning Scargill is a dirty word around here. But, Not um, at all. Uh, I, met, uh, I was converted to the Christian faith at Scargill. I met my wife at Scargill. We were married in the chapel at Scargill. I did my first curacy with the former uh, assistant warden of Scargill, David Banfield, whose widow is here with us today. And um, some would say Scargill's got a lot to answer for. <laughs> I say I have a lot to thank God for through this movement. I chaired the um, Lee Abbey Students Club in London for some years, and I was on the council of Lee Abbey as well for some years. So I feel immersed in this movement and immersed in this vision. Back in the 1940s, there were a bunch of people who saw this building in Devon and saw the potential that it might have for a lay community to come together and serve the wider church. That vision, as we know, is developed. And the communities of Aston and uh, Noel here have uh, been around now 25 years, so I think that makes it your silver wedding anniversary, doesn't it? Um, must say, you don't look your age. Well, most of you, anyway. <laughs> um, so listening, I think what these community experiments are about is really important and maybe even more important in the future 
for the kind of um, drivers of the Christian faith going forward. And, and when you think about those drivers of history, individualism, freedom, it seems to me that one of the notable things is that living in community undermines both those things. <coughs> it undermines the idea that we are, as Thomas Merton put it, people who are islands. We were meant to live in community with each other. And community begins where people start to take responsibility for one another. The big difference between a community and a people group. Communities where people take responsibility. And, and I think that the idea that, uh, that we can live together collectively is a very powerful idea. At the same time, for communities to work, people have to place some limits around their freedom. If you've ever lived in community, you know that you can't do what you want when you want anymore. Um, our community was built around a very strict rule of life at Scarkill, whereby we had to be in chapel at 7.30 every morning. I can remember once oversleeping. And the then warden came down and pulled the bedclothes off me and said, we do not rejoice in our beds, Mike. <laughs> uh, times have changed, I think. But, um, um, at the heart of living together in community is the concept of corporate discipline. I don't think it can work without it. And as I think about God's big idea, that is... God's love for the whole of the world. Like God's big idea is not just for great churches, but for a world where all human beings can flourish. I wonder if the beacons of community life together might start to shine a little more brightly in this community where so many people are lonely and so many people are hurting. So friends, as Paul said, and I say this to today's community and past communities, your work is not in vain. And supporting the local churches in the way that you do, I know that the clergy you've been through at this part of the world have been very grateful for that. And I want to say thank you to you, especially those of you who are living in community today. And here's my advice, don't stop. I've been very gracious and mostly conscious and I would like to say a prayer with you now before uh, whatever happens next happens. Can we maybe do that? Just bow our heads. Lord, we thank you for those men and women who in the 1940s had the seeds of an idea. And Lord, that idea was brought to bear by audacious faith. A belief that this was an idea from you, Father and that you would supply the needs. And Father, today, many years later on, we thank you that that vision shines brightly. We thank you for uh, the local communities and the communities at the Abbey and at Scarborough. And Lord, we want to pray the blessing on those communities, not as an end in themselves, but Lord, that those communities might be the life source of blessing to many. Lord, that your big idea, your kingdom here on earth, might be increasingly realized. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. And the people who agreed said together, Amen. I have no idea what happens now.